Rose of Croton. The Untold Story of Milo. John Abdo. Chapter 5. What's practice? The yard is consumed with plumes of vaporized perspiration from hundreds of sweating bodies. All athletes are pumping up their muscles and rehearsing their athletic techniques, curious as to how Croton's newest wrestler will condition his body for the upcoming World Youth Games. Holding a wooden stick in one hand, Philostratus calls to one of his experienced adult wrestlers, named Nomentis, and orders, show Croton's new boy wrestler a thing, or two. As Nomentis and Milo approach the Skama, a pair of Philostratus adjutants, each carrying an airy bellows filled with olive oil, begin to smear the sacred ointment onto the athletes' bodies, other than offering protection from the hot sun, and to highlight muscular definition, the oil's primary purpose is to adhere dirt to any body part that contacts the ground, eliminating any doubt as to the status of a fallen wrestler. Philostratus chose Nomentis specifically as a worthy test for Milo. The veteran Grotonian athlete is a champion wrestler, victorious in numerous Panhellenic events and, from when he competed in boxing and Pancration tournaments, known for having killed many men with his fists and bone-crushing grips. This is just practice, right? Nomentis asks Milo. Practice? Milo replies, raising a confused brow. What's practice? After looking into Milo's unflinching eyes, and sensing he is in for a lot of hurt, the prize fighter Nomentis hesitates to enter the Skama. After five lashings from Philostratus' stick, Croton's head coach replaces the outed coward with another one of his decorated adult combatants. The replacement fighter's name is Fanas. He too is an esteemed wrestler who has also competed in boxing and pancreation, and like Nomentis, is a known killer. Enter the Skama. Philostratus commands, but like Nomentis, Fanas shows hesitation. As Philostratus raises his stick to lash Fanas, both Nomentis and Fanas quickly band together and respectfully address their coach. Fanas does the talking. Coach, Milo walked into the yard carrying a bull on his back. How do you expect us to challenge his strength when we have no such capacity? We demonstrate no cower. We are merely using common sense. Milo is our teammate, and even if it is without his intent, he could injure us, maybe kill us. He should demonstrate his powers over those who intentionally draw lots, those who train their bodies for ten months knowing they will enter the pit and face Milo of Croton at the games. Unpersuaded by Nomentis and Fanas please, after spitting on their feet, Philostratus shouts to all his wrestlers. If you are concerned with an opponent's brawn, then note that great wrestlers understand they must rely on their conditioned skills, a strategy designed to outwit and technically outmaneuver the stronger opponent. Size does not matter, boys. After his motivational announcement, Philostratus continues calling to anybody in attendance who has courage enough to face the newly self-appointed wrestler. Finally, another champion fighter named Hagnon steps forward to accept the challenge. Hagnon is a metallurgist and stonemason who quarries his own raw materials from a mountain he leases from Diotimos, a powerful combatant. One who combines cunning technical finesse with his overbearing brawn, Agnon has won numerous boxing, wrestling, and pancreation competitions, and before coming to Croton, successfully fought in military conflicts to settle territorial disputes, and thus gained mating rights with nomadic females. Hagnon considers a challenge an opportunity, and is proud to demonstrate his commitment to Agn in front of his coaches and fellow teammates. As he approaches the pit, Hagnon tauntingly shouts at Nomentis and Fanas, Watch this, you cowards. I will teach this brawny boy a lesson, or three. Having insinuated he plans to score a triactor over Milo, Hagnon enters the pit bobbing his torso and weaving his shoulders, mentally and physically preparing to technically outmaneuver the brawny rookie. As both athletes stand in cystasis, Philostratus, who's serving as referee, shouts, Apotea! Milo leans forward to put his forehead onto Agnon's while simultaneously reaching for an ankle. Immediately, Philostratus shouts, Tozy. Everyone is confused as to why the match has been stopped, and more so, how Hagnon won the round. 
Philostratus then points to Milo's knuckles, which brushed the ground when reaching for Hagnon's ankle, noting the dust which now clings to his hand. Milo, 1, Hagnon, 0. After the wrestlers return to their cystasis positions, Philostratus again shouts, Apotea! And this time Milo lowers his torso and attempts to reach in for a high crotch. Tozy! Philostratus shouts a second time, as fresh dirt is now clinging to the top of Milo's right knee. Milo, 2. Hagnon, 0. With possibly one fall remaining, and Hagnon close to being declared the victor after scoring three falls, and, just as he boasted, three lessons, an onlooking teammate shouts, Milo, only your feet can touch the dirt. Your competition at the World Youth Games will be upright wrestling. That style has different rules than ground wrestling. As Milo is considering the technical instruction, Philostratus orders the wrestlers to return to their cystasis positions. As they once again size one another up, Milo assumes a different stance. Hagnon, meanwhile, is jumping around, believing he will easily win this point and score his predicted triactor. Apotea! Philostratus shouts, and those who blinked, missed it. Milo thrust his body forward so explosively his sternum smashed into Hagnon's forehead, hyperextending his neck. Immediately, as the head was thrown backward, Milo quickly cupped his right hand behind Hagnon's head and within the same motion swatted his arm downward, face-planting Hagnon into the dirt. From the sound of the impact, it's obvious Hagnon will not be getting up anytime soon. The assistants rush over with a gurney. After wiping away the dirt clinging to Hagnon's face and impacted inside his mouth and nostrils, the aides transport the fallen wrestler to Caliphon's infirmary. With Philostratus refusing to announce the final score, I took that liberty unto myself, sounded my horn, and heralded, by way of injury default. His opponent incapacitated, and unable to complete the contest, Milo of Croton. Victor. If you are enjoying this content, please like, follow, share, and subscribe, and I'll continue to bring you more fascinating information on Milo of Croton and other great mythological and mortal figures from antiquity. I'm John Abdo, thanking you for watching. Stay strong and healthy, and perhaps one day, thousands of years from now, people then will be remembering your name as well.